Thank you very much. Um, the title, I think, that we agreed earlier on, although I noticed it's not the same as I've got here, was um, Sustainable Policy, Changing Behaviours and Culture in the Welsh Government, um, which is a reasonable description of what I do, um, which I'll tell you a bit about. I'm hoping to keep the talk bit fairly short so that we can have some questions and, and discussion um, uh, before we have lunch, <laughs> sort of um, get our appetite going for lunchtime. Um, so I'm, I'm Diana, I'm, uh, my job title changes uh, every year and a half, but I'm three years into a large programme of behavioural and cultural change with round about a third of the civil servants who work for the Welsh Government. Um, basically the ones who are um, working on natural resources, so agriculture, environment, planning, um, one or two other bits and pieces as people sort of come to find the programme and get involved in it, they tend to go away and continue the work themselves. So it's, it's quite an interesting uh, growing body of people, but it's roughly, roughly a third of the civil service. Part of which is my friend Jo, who's <laughs> come along to support me today. Um, uh, jo works on um, strategic evidence for the whole of that um, departmental area. So um, a really big uh, brief in trying to help us to be much more cogent about the way in which we seek and use evidence within the policy. Um, and uh, she's particularly interested in how we can get academics involved in the whole of the policy cycle. So um, if, you, if you're interested in those sorts of things, then grab Jo <laughs> over lunch and I'm sure she'll be delighted to talk to you about the possibilities there. Um, did you want to say anything else by way of introducing yourself? No, no? that's fine. Okay, <laughs> good. I must have got it just about right. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Um, I'll say a little bit about me. Um, I have had a number of careers as a school teacher within support services and academia, uh, within the ICT industry, and in 2000 I was asked to join the Welsh Government to take up the role of um, manager for the ICT strategy for the whole of Wales. I did double check that several times, like, you mean the whole of Wales? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whole country. <laughs> and all my colleagues went, you can't not do that. And so I had to go and do that. And you, you work as a civil servant for a bit and then you discover that actually if you don't do different topics, people think that you're just an IT manager, so that's a bit of a drag on your career. So um, I was really lucky to get invited to interview for the head of Nature Conservation and Biodiversity Policy. Uh, and so uh, almost 10 years ago now, I started that job and I made a commitment that I would be with them for 20 years supporting biodiversity in Wales and I'm nearly halfway through, which is a little bit scary. <laughs> so have we done half the work? I don't think so, but, um, but, uh, but very exciting to be on that road. Um, I uh, subsequently got involved in various things which I'll tell you a little bit about, uh, including the job that I'm doing now, which is much more about the internal ecology of organisations uh, rather than the external environment, but we're finding incredible synergies between those two things, so that's quite, that's quite exciting in itself. Okay, so um, a little bit of history. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, now the thing to know here is I'm not a historian, so my dates are a bit dodgy. <laughs> And also, I think there's probably some spelling mistakes somewhere, but please don't, <coughs> please ignore those. Um, there was Welsh law quite well developed quite a long time ago. Um, in fact, in the 12th century, so 1100s, um, somebody got as far as writing it down and they called it Cyfraith Hulda, the, the laws of Hulda. I know there's at least one person in the room who knows this already, so I'm... <laughs> But, um, but I wanted to point that out because historically that's quite interesting. Um, that worked for quite a long period. Um, and then there was an act of union between um, England and Wales and they came together and actually there were two acts. So that, that bit's a bit dodgy too. The first date is right. Um, and that we came together as one place. And, um, and from then the Welsh law didn't stand. It was all based on English law and a completely different system. And it wasn't until 1999 that we established a Welsh uh, National Assembly for Wales, as it was at the time. It's, it's now the National Assembly for Wales is the equivalent of the Parliament and the Welsh Government is the equivalent of the UK Government, but at the lower level. Um, uh, that we sort of got a chance to make some laws. In fact, we didn't get a chance to make primary legislation until much later. Um, that came in in 2010. 
And when you make primary legislation, the first thing you do is write a, something called a green paper. And the green paper is, is the sort of the policy that will eventually lead to having legislation. And I was greatly honoured to be the person who led the writing of the first ever green paper for Wales. And it was green. It was actually about the environment. And I wrote that collaboratively with 73 people, which was an absolute nightmare. But um, and you, you can see on our website, we, some of it we grasped, some of it you can go, oh, no, you really didn't grasp that. But, uh, you know, work in progress, um, which has led to some of the, the future activities. Um, so I, things I should say, th this period in here is really interesting because I'm working with civil servants on changing their behaviours and their culture. A lot of the culture was set in this period because we were part of the UK civil service. So there's some very interesting long-term challenges. I've got people who've inherited behaviours on a generational, intergenerational basis. Um, so that's quite fascinating. And that works both for good things and bad things. So there's some ways that these guys work which were fabulous and we love it, and there's some ways that these guys work that you really want to do. So, uh, you know, both on both sides, that's very interesting. Um, the Green Paper um, was based on um, the Convention on Biological Diversity's um, ecosystems approach. So some of you will perhaps be aware of the ecosystem approach with its 12 principles. So I've got one or two nods. I've got, I've got a few copies of it if anybody wants to have a look at it over lunch. Um, but that's what we're trying to embed in Welsh law. So that, that's where it becomes quite interesting. We're trying to normalise the application of those 12 principles across a whole country. So <laughs> wish us luck, because you know, we need to do that. Anyway, <laughs> that's what we're attempting to do. So the, a first, a real, real big breakthrough, which I wasn't involved in directly, um, is the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act, which is now in law. Again, I've got a handout if anybody wants to look at the details of it. And that um, makes it necessary for everybody in the public sector across Wales to look at the way that they make decisions in a completely different way. And I will, I'll read you the actual thing. So it forces you to consider not just the generation you're currently working with, but future generations and the effects on those people. Um, and it <coughs> invites you to consider... Um, five different elements of the way that you're making a decision. So long-termism, unsurprisingly, preventative ways of looking at things, um, integrated approaches that deliver more than one thing at a time, collaboration across the public sector and involvement of ordinary people in what you're doing. And, and that, that now has become a standard in the way that we need to do policy. And from, um, I think it's a year and a bit from now, we will actually be measured by our own audit office on that. Um, and there'll be a commissioner to whom the public can go and say, they made this decision, but they didn't do it in a way that was integrated, or they didn't do it in a way that was preventative. Um, and that will instigate a learning curve for us to try and improve what we do. So, I should mention, while I'm mentioning that, m my work, speaks obviously to the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. It also speaks to the public sector reform challenges, the way that we're changing the public sector in Wales. It's a different model to the model in England, so there's much less outsourcing uh, and um, putting things into private ownership. Uh, there's much more of a focus on, on um, community and service to community and individuals. Um, a very old-fashioned phrase for it is um, voice not choice so rather than being able to choose which school to go to you get a voice in helping your school to get better so that that's sort of roughly um, conceptually where it's at uh, and the third thing is of course a reducing amount of resources so right across the board resources are on a downward spiral and so everything that I do has to meet those three requirements together as one so I don't treat them as three separate challenges I try and treat them as one unified challenge and then work on that So what assumptions have we made? Right. So I'm working with a group of civil servants. We've made some assumptions before we started. We've assumed that we're working system systemically. We've assumed that anything that's happening that's good or bad is part of the system. So we're not in a situation where we're worried about particular groups or individuals being blamed for something. So if there's a behaviour going on, we're interested in 
not only where is that behaviour and who's showing that, but also what are the behaviours around it and how might they relate to each other, rather than going, oh, well, you obviously were rude, so it's obviously your fault. But, you know, with this bit, little bit more depth going on there. Um, we've assumed that everybody has a role in solving it. We've assumed that leadership occurs right across the piece at all levels, in all places, and that, you know, everybody will at some point need to come forward and go, hang on, that bit. Um, we've made a quite a big assumption about how change occurs. So we're very strictly holding people to the rule that you have a little bit of control over here, some element of control, but you have no control over the rest of the world. So any change is about what you're going to change here that may change the situation and therefore will give people perhaps more options than they would have usually had to respond to you differently. And that, that's the, the, the idea. Um, and that change might start anywhere in the system, not necessarily at the top or the bottom or the middle, but actually it could be anywhere. So, having made that assumption, we then did some analysis of what we got um, and came up with a picture. And then from that picture, we worked out what we thought might be the helpful things. And this is our list of our potentially helpful things. So, we think... We're basically, what the zone we're in here is, the world happens very fast, we're all reacting very quickly to streets of email and all sorts of stuff going on, and lots of pressures. Um, so our hypothesis, if you like, is that we need a little bit of space to think, to get a little bit more traction, to maybe move a little bit slower. The analogy that I like to use is swimming. When I learned to swim, I'm still struggling with it. M my coach says, I need to, I need to move slower and then I'll go faster. And I'm like, are you sure? I really can't, but it's, I know he's right. I know he's right. Um, so, so that's where these come in. So coaching, executive coaching, one-to-one -one or one-to-many, sitting with people and taking them through useful questions to get them to think through a problem and solve it for themselves. Um, Co-production, which some people call big coaching. So big group, bigger groups of people working together as a community in some sense and using that same respectful approach. Everybody's bringing something to the table, everybody's equal. We're all valuing each other and, and starting from there and trying to find where that little piece of useful action can be found in the, um, in the, the uh, subset, the overlapping set of what we want after doing. Um, and mindfulness, we're doing some quite interesting um, experiments around mindfulness. We're using the standard eight week course that you would normally use for, um, for for care for serious pain or depression or whatever, and we're taking that into the policy environment and seeing whether we can get an improvement in decision making using that. And both Joe and I have been on the course and are, are t live testing out whether it's having an effect on how we work or not. So, um, so that that's quite interesting. We get some, we've got some very early data to show that it does look as though it has an impact on the way that people behave in the office. Whether or not we can get that really sweet, improved advice giving and decision making out of it, we don't yet know. Um, and action learning sets. That's been a little bit slow off the ground, um, but I've just, uh, in the last few weeks, set up an action learning set for chief executives in the public sector in my local area in Mid Wales, and we're just testing the water with that to see how that goes. S uh, incredibly, a lot of people at that level don't have a coach, they don't have an action learning set that they belong to, um, and so there's a real energy around just <coughs> being given some space to talk to somebody about what they're doing, and especially when it's somebody who's got similar and slightly different experience, so you can sort of um, learn quite a lot from each other. It might help. This is what we're trying. This is our, our hypothesis. Um, how does it work? OK, well, there's a, there's a detailed architecture. Now, you've got that on your chair. This is the architecture that we use for the change. So this is very, very simple. There's a left-hand column. In the left-hand column, we've got how we used to think the world works. There's a right-hand column. In the right-hand column, we've got, now we've read the last 50 years of research, this is how we think the world might actually possibly work, OK? And my job is just to bring people from the left of the table to the right. Absolutely as simple as that. Incredibly difficult to do. <laughs> but that's it. So you, you've got it in a nutshell there. Um, we're particularly interested in where you might know of research which speaks to this paper. So if, you, if there's a line in there and you're going, oh, yeah, I know somebody who's written about that. We really, really would like to collect um, 
perhaps over lunch or if you're in the second session today, um, your references for research which speaks either to say, oh yeah, that's the right sort of move, or to say, oh hang on, it's not quite like that, or in fact, no, you've got completely the wrong thing in there, it needs to be the other way around. Th those sorts of pieces of information are really, really helpful. So um, if you have anything, and Julia's agreed to accept emails from people with the references and things and collate that for us, so we'd be really grateful for any insights you might have. So there's detailed architecture. We, we have a, an outline of how we're going to work together. Um, and then basically the idea is you drop one well-behaved person in to a group of 1,300 other people and then virally <laughs> they all become well-behaved. And that's basically the technology. It's very, very simple. So I offer a set of services which um, are around the idea of coaching and co-production. I work with the civil servants themselves, with groups of civil servants, with civil servants and their stakeholders, facilitating things, coaching people, generally being helpful. We have a lovely thing called the cup of tea meeting. Uh, anybody in that cohort can ask for a cup of tea meeting when they feel they've got an intractable problem that they'd like solved and they just get a cup of tea and an hour to sit and be listened to. And usually, I don't even have to say anything, they sort it out themselves. But, um, th so, th so really very basic technology, uh, but that's working. So we're hoping that's going to cause you know, even more contagion over time. And then uh, I should say that is on demand too, actually, the on demand help sheet. So as people go, hang on a minute, I need to know how to do co-production. We've produced a one page sheet on this is how you do co-production if you've never done it before. It's easy, you just follow the sheet and then spend 10,000 hours doing that. You know. so, so those sorts of things so, uh, we've got. And also they are shareable. I've, all of those are, uh, um, are uh, on an open, uh, an open frame so you can actually use that, that material and huge, absolutely enormous stacks of patience. And that's about it. <laughs> we think it works because of these things over here. So it's increasing connections between people. It's building relationships between people and it's focused on delivery as opposed to policy development necessarily. So it is much more grounded in what's really happening in the real world than in having a theoretical conversation. And we think that those three elements are maybe what is enabling it to get some sort of traction. Again, you know, your views and comments would be really welcome on that. So emerging <laughs> from all this, there's some interesting stories. Um, almost everybody I'm working with at a very high level is really committed to something really valuable to themselves and it's really interesting what those things are. So I got harangued quite early in the programme, I got harangued by um, a, a, an external stakeholder who said that basically, I don't know why you're doing this, because they all, they just hate people, they want to tell people what to do, they're not interested. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but actually that's not what we found. What we found is there's a deep, deep value. I've got one poor guy who hates hierarchy. He's spent 20 years in the civil service and he hates hierarchy. He wants everybody to be valued. You know, it's like, how have you managed that? But he's managed that by piling up over that value a lot of protection. And so it's taking us a little while sometimes to find that value and then go, okay, well, actually, here's some, here's some technology, here's some skills. You can actually deliver the value that you want to deliver rather than trying to pretend to be somebody else. So, so that, that's fascinating in itself. Um, there's a huge enthusiasm. This is my 12th big change programme, I think. It was only got to the 10th that I realised I was doing them all wrong because what would happen is I would eventually run out of patience and I would go, OK, we, I would sugar the pill, we really need to look at this. <laughs> and I, I've run out of patience and now I'm pushing, you see. I'm going, we need to look at this. The other guy, maybe he's got another six, ten, twenty things on his list. So I've absolutely, religiously been offering, going in and saying, what well, would you like to do this? Would you like to do that? And for the very grumpy people, I just keep going back every week. Well, would you like to do this? Would you like to do that? And eventually, all of them have gone, OK, maybe just this little safe bit here. <laughs> but even when you're the most grumpy person going, oh, just this little safe bit here, there's a little pull, there's a little curiosity. Oh, maybe, is there something in it? Don't know, worth a try. So, so we, that's been really interesting. So I've been able to pull people through that little tiny hole into somewhere a little bit bigger, rather than attempting to push and 
uh, you know, really not doing any justice. I went back and apologised to programme number four when I realised this. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand what I was doing. And they went, I don't know what you're talking about, it was fine. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of reassuring. But um, OK, so yes, uh, the lack of basic skills, interpersonal and project management skills, supervisory skills, you know, real sort of fundamental, you know, the first textbook, even though these people are way, way yeah, streets ahead with understanding some of the really complex stuff. So it's a real um, interesting uh, picture there. Um, a lot of leaving bits of themselves at the door. So uh, incredibly well-rounded, fabulous people walk through the door into the office and they leave most of that behind and just bring their little rational head with them. And, and that's it. So now we know that's happening, we can start to sort of maybe work with that a bit. Some very interesting stuff about the dark side of organisations. As you can imagine, I'm sure. I, I went on a train journey with a guy who was in the army and worked with the MOD, and he was so sympathetic to me doing my job. He was like, oh, God, that must be so hard, because he'd met some of the people, you know, that I was dealing with. Um, what's interesting about that is both the dark, the, the light coming out of the dark and the dark coming out of the light. So you, you create an organisation to do good things, you create the NHS to do good things, but it, if un unmonitored, it becomes a behemoth in its own right and causes not only good things, but also, also bad things. And we can see that happening both ways around. So we, I've been doing a bit of historical analysis on the biodiversity um, sector at the moment, and it looks as though a lot of the uh, interest in that came out of some pretty bad things. Some of the very first nature conservationists were big game hunters. So there's interesting dilemmas built into this. Um, the way we've been working with that for ourselves is in distinguishing between anger and outrage. So we'll get a bit angry and emotional about things, but what we're trying to do is go, OK, I'm angry. Where can I channel my outrage in a really positive way? And so we're sort of playing with that idea of, of behaving, responding differently to how we might naturally just immediately respond. Um, and on process, we found what we think is we're going to call the sweet spot. So if you imagine a huge bureaucratic organisation, absolutely masses of paperwork, can't get anything done because it's just paperwork. And then over here, if you manage, if you imagine a completely easy fair, I haven't even got a proper audit trail, so I'm going twitchy over here. There's a line between the two. Fascinatingly, quite close <laughs> to that end, <laughs> which is sort of interesting for us, there is something, we're calling it a sweet spot. There's a point at which you have just enough process that it energises everybody. And this is quite interesting. So we, you know, again, we're playing with that. I've had directors chairing huge, big meetings with chief executives of this and that across the country. And they've come out and gone, I can't believe that. I kept them to the process and they were like, full of energy. Well, it, they must have just hit that spot on those occasions. So again, we're not quite sure. We're not always hitting it, but we're sort of playing with that. So, I'm here because we're interested in working with you, <laughs> obviously. Um, everything I've got is on an open government licence, so if you're interested in the coaching stuff, we've got materials we can share. If you're interested in the co-production stuff, we've got materials we can share. Um, you can make free use of the architecture, if that takes your fancy. Um, and specifically within universities, we're, we're saying we'd like to work with people. We'd like to work with people entirely at your own expense, so that's sort of, you know, is, there's, we're not offering um, to help with the very thing that I know is probably the most uh, important. Um, but it does give you unique access to civil servants doing civil servanty things and attempting to do them in new ways. So you, if you're interested enough in that and it's a useful thing to have access to, then, um, you know, we're interested in whatever research areas you might be interested in, really. Um, at the moment, I've got a pretty good grasp on coaching, we've got a pretty good baseline around that and we've got people interested in, in doing some PhDs with us on that. We've got a pretty good idea on the mindfulness because we've got some ongoing research and the possibility of two PhD students at the moment. Um, Co-production we're still working our way a little bit with, um, but, but this covers almost every policy area that we, you know, everything is linked to everything, so there's all sorts of possibilities um, that we might consider. Uh, and that's my details in case you want to contact me if you you know you might today you might go oh. but next week you might go oh hmm. <laughs> so yeah no, that's for that okay 
I think I'm going to stop there and just take questions and respond to people if that's okay. Yeah? <laughs>